Okay, let's start with our next topic that is uh, Young's double slit experiment. So let me write here Young's double slit experiment. So Thomas Young, he did an experiment to prove a very beautiful phenomenon of light called interference. So in this experiment, he took double slits or two narrow windows. So let me take here one and the second one. These windows are not like ordinary windows. These slits are very small. How much small? The, uh, the size of the slits are nearly comparable to the wavelength of the light used. So this is S1, this is S2, window 1 and window 2. We have a source of light. What kind of source? Obviously coherent source. What are coherent sources? The sources which have same wavelength, same frequency, same phase difference or constant phase difference. So light waves which are coming from the source, they are heading towards the two slits and this is one screen. Any ordinary wall or a screen where you can see the pattern which will be formed here. Now I have introduced in the previous lecture what type of pattern and what is constructive and destructive interference. But before we go for constructive and in, uh, destructive interference, let me remind in the last lecture I gave a condition. What is the phase difference for constructive interference? The phase difference phi for a constructive interference was 0 degree. For a destructive interference, the phase difference must be 180 degree. This is the angle phase difference. But what is the path difference? So we will call it as x. Path difference for constructive interference must be n lambda. And uh, path difference for destructive interference must be n plus half lambda. These conditions we will put at the end. So let's say there is a light wave which is going from slit S1 and hitting at any point on the screen. Another wave is going to through S2 and hitting at any point P on the screen. And at point P we will find a constructive interference. So we will put this condition at the end of constructive interference at point P. Now let's say the separation between the two slits and the screen is this. This is the gap between the slit, where the slit is placed and the screen is placed. And what is the distance this? Let's keep this distance as capital D. So this is our capital D. The separation between the two slits, let's take it as small d. This is the separation between the two windows. Now from the center, let's say this is the geometrical center of these two slits. And this geometrical center is at any point O. Let's name it as M. This is as N. So uh, OP, let me take, assume that OP is X. X is how much? OP. So OP is X. What will be my OM? OM is D by 2. And ON must be d by 2. The separation between the two slits is mn, that is d. So OM is d by 2 and ON is d by 2. Okay, great. Let's take the triangles now. So let me take now first triangle. The first triangle is S1PM. Now in this S1PM, my S1 P square, Pythagoras theorem, hypotenuse square equals to P M square plus S1 M square. Great. Now what is P M? P M will be equals to O P minus O M whole square plus S1 M square. I hope this is clear. Now what is O P? O P is nothing but X and OM minus D by 2 whole square plus S1M 
that's capital D square equation number one next is let's take the second triangle s2 p n so s2 p n again using the Pythagoras theorem s2 p square is equals to p n square plus s2 n square now what is our p n our p n is p o or o p plus o n whole square plus s2 n square so o p o p is how much x and o n o n is how much d by 2 plus d square this is your s2 p square equation number 2 let's subtract equation 2 and equation 1 so this will give us i am doing it here s2 p square minus s1 p square is equals to x plus d by 2 whole square plus d square minus x minus d by 2 whole square minus d square d square cancels with this i left with x square plus d square by 4 plus x d minus x square minus d square by 4 plus x d when you expand the bracket now x square will cancel with x square d square by 4 cancels with d square by 4 you left with twice of x d that is equals to s 2 p minus s 1 p square now a square minus b square let's take it here as s 2 p plus s 1 p into s 2 p minus s 1 p and on the right hand side it is twice of x d I hope this is clear now we know if I take s 2 p plus s 1 p on the right hand side it will go in the denominator so s 2 p minus s 1 p that is equals to twice of x d upon s 2 p plus s 1 for our uh, an approximation we will take here an approximation s 2 p plus s 1 p that is nearly equal to twice of capital D this is an approximation we have to remember we will substitute here and this will give us s 2 p minus s 1 p that is equals to twice x d whole divided by capital twice d this gets cancelled now what is s 2 p minus s 1 p let us focus on the diagram once again so s1 p is uh, this one the top one s2 p is that if i make a perpendicular from s1 p this gap this extra gap over here this gap is the extra path difference and because of this path difference you are getting an a pattern at point p now that pattern can be constructive or destructive now we have to substitute the condition so let's substitute the condition for constructive interference so s 2 p minus x uh, s 1 p let me take it as n lambda where x will be written as x n the position of nth fringe d by d and this implies x n is equals to n lambda capital d by d this is the position of the fringes for constructive interference you can find they can ask you the second maxima third maxima so put simply two three whatever but what is important here is fringe width so how do we find fringe width if xn is this what will be the neck where will be the next maxima at x n plus 1 so it will be n plus 1 lambda d by d so this will be n lambda d by d plus lambda d by d that's your xn plus 1 so fringe width we can find as beta that is equals to x n plus 1 minus x n and that will be equals to n lambda d by d plus lambda d by d minus x n which is n lambda d by d this you can get can this gets cancelled and you left with a very important factor on which the numericals will be asked beta beta is what fringe width lambda d by d and it is independent of where the fringe is located and it only depends on the type of light source lambda wavelength of the light used capital d the separation between the slit and the screen 
small d the separation between the two slits okay let's move to the last topic of this whole chapter and that is single slit diffraction so diffraction means bending of light diffraction though there is no such difference between diffraction and interference but still diffraction you can say bending of the light at the curvature of any object curvature means the corners so let's say this is our a single slit this is very important topic many times they ask explain the phenomena of diffraction using single slit so let's say this is a single slit and from this single slit there is these are the rays which are heading which rays our light rays which are heading towards it so they are heading towards this single slit single slit means single window in this direction straight path now these rays which are heading towards this single slit they were supposed to go straight right they were supposed to go in this direction so let me draw it okay let me draw another one here so these are the rays which were supposed to go in this particular direction these all rays yeah but they don't go in the same path what happens they bend at the curvature of this window what is the curvature the corners so this red path was the path where the ray is supposed to go but they don't go in that path but they get deviated at the corners so instead of going straight these rays will go a little in this path and they move like this okay they are somewhat like this so these rays will go in that path now let's say the size of the slit let me call it as l m and this l m is the width of this window width of this single slit that is let's say a so if a is the width of this slit let's make a perpendicular to the from the first ray so if i make a perpendicular from the first ray this is the extra path difference between the first and this one this is the extra path this is the extra path so extra path is responsible for the path difference and where there is a path difference of n lambda what will happen there will be a constructive interference so let's say there is a constructive interference happening at point p where the, all these rays are going and let me call it as m uh, n so in the triangle l m n let's say this is angle theta over here angle made okay here yeah. okay so what will be sin theta sin theta will be perpendicular mn upon hypotenuse hypotenuse is what ln what is mn sir mn is the path difference between the rays first ray and the last ray maximum path difference and lambda is the path difference if they are going and meeting constructively lm is the slit size a here you go sin theta we know for small angle approximation sin theta is equals to nearly equal to theta and theta will be equals to n lambda by a this is the condition for single slit diffraction done